every week. Thank you very much. 1 Kings chapter 10, begin reading at verse number 1. It's so good to see all of our guests that are here. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. We're, uh, we're just glad that you're here. Amen. Somebody said amen. Amen. 1 Kings chapter 10, this is one of my favorite stories in uh, all the scripture. I love to preach about this story. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse number 1, the Bible says, And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. Can I just tell you, God is not intimidated by your hard questions. Sometimes my daughter, she'll be like, Dad, I'm really going to stump you. And she'll say, you know, what's 31 times 3? And in her mind, that's big time right there. I mean, you know, it doesn't get much harder than 31 times 3. But because of my experience, I recognize, you know, I can handle that. You know, some of the things that we think are so hard and so difficult and so tough, you know, when you serve in an omnipotent God, he says, that's just 31 times 3. That ain't no big deal. God is not intimidated with your hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train with camels that bear spices, very much gold, precious stone. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. When the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built, the meat of his table, the sitting of his servants, the attendance of his ministers, their apparel, his cupbearers, his ascent by which he went up, under the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit or no more fight left in her. And she said to the king, it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believe not the words until I came and my eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. I'm just going to tell you right now as I'm reading these, uh, we may be here three hours. There's so much to preach in this today. I'm going to do my best to get through it, I promise you. But there is so much here in this story. Verse 8, I want to focus on verse number 8. After all this, she said, I, the wisdom, your prosperity, it exceeds the fame. But verse 8, she says, happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. That word happy literally means blessed. Anybody blessed? I want to preach for a little while here this morning on this subject. Happy servants. Happy servants. I want us to pray and ask the Lord to help us today. Lord, we love you, Jesus. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace and power. We thank you for your wonderful presence that has already met us here God, you have been so good to us already. But I believe that by the time we leave this place, somebody will be in your presence in a way they've never experienced before. And God, they'll leave this place blessed, happy, full of joy. I pray today in the name of Jesus, God, that you'll just pour out your power and your spirit in this place. And God, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor that's due to your wonderful name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Now, do me a favor. Put a smile on your face. You know, we used to sing that song sometimes, you know, we're a happy people, yes we are. It wasn't very motivating. So put a smile on your face, high five six or seven folks around you, and tell them I'm glad to be a happy servant. This story, at first glance, it might not resonate with us very much, but I think there's, this is such a beautiful word picture that the Lord gives to us 
about the experience of those that come in contact with not just a king, but with the king of kings for the very first time. Beautiful illustration of the progress, the process that a person goes through uh, from, from awareness all the way to conversion. There's so many lessons that can be taken from this particular story, and I don't have time today to go into all of them, but I do want to touch on a few things before we get into the heart of our message. First of all, the chapter opens up by saying that the queen of Sheba had heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord. I think it's interesting to note this morning that the thing that attracted her, the thing that uh, uh, got her attention, the thing that caused her to pack up all of her things and all of her belongings and begin this journey was she heard the fame of the king. Can I just let the church know here this morning, ladies and gentlemen, you know what we need to let people know about? We need to start talking more about Jesus. This lady, this unbeliever, if I can say it this way, unaware of the glory and the power of this king, but when she heard of the fame of the king, something inside of her said, I've got to go see what everybody is talking about. You know, so many times we try to get people to join our church or to come see our church. You know what we need to do? We need to be like Paul. Paul to the Corinthians said, I made up in my mind when I came to you. I decided I wasn't going to know anything else. I could sit down and debate and talk to you about all the issues of life and we could discuss and argue and we could do all of those kinds of things. But I made up in my mind when I came to see you, I'm the only thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about Jesus Christ and him crucified. I want to tell somebody in this place today, there's nobody like Jesus. We need to let folks in this world know you've never come in contact with anybody like this king. He's not just a king. He is the king of kings. He has all power, all glory, all dominion. I want to testify about the fame of the king today. There is such a, such a uh, resistance to quote-unquote religion in our world. They don't want to hear anybody talking about religion. So you know what we need to do? We need to climb up on uh, to that mountaintop and begin to boldly declare without fear and without favor that Jesus Christ is alive and He is well today. And we need to declare that He has all power in heaven and earth. We need to let people know church is not dead. God is not dead. He's still on the throne. He's still a healer. I said He's still a healer. He's still a provider. He's still a way maker. He's still a miracle worker. Come on, we need to let everybody know your situation is not too far gone from God. We need to start testifying about the fame of the King. He still is a healer. If He did it yesterday, He can do it today. I'm glad to know that my God is still in control. He's still the King of kings and Lord of... Come on, First Apostolic. We need to let people know about the fame of the King. We need to start testifying about Jesus. It was, it was perhaps maybe for the first time that she had heard about this king. Can I just tell you, there's a lot of folks in this world, the reason that they're turned off from quote-unquote church is because they've never really come in contact with the king. Hello? They, they, you know, they've never, they've never really come in contact. Maybe there might even be folks that... That I don't know, I don't know, and don't take this offensively, but before I got into the, the, the Pentecostal church, the apostolic church, I didn't even know there was such a thing on the planet. And there are a lot of folks today that their image, their view of what church is all about, their image of what, you know, going to church on Sunday is all about is, you know, catch a little extra sleep in the pew. You know, and saying, you know, saying some memorized prayers and all that kind of stuff. We need to start telling folks it's not about the church name, but in this house, this is where the king is. Hello? And this is a place, this is a place where you can come and you can experience for yourself what everybody's talking about. 
You hear people talking about, man, you ain't, you ain't never experienced anything until you've experienced the power of the Holy Ghost. But until you experience it for yourself, uh, you're going to never know exactly how good it is. Anybody in this place can testify that there is nothing on this planet that can compare to the presence of God in your life. It's better than anything this world has to offer. It's better than any pleasure. It's better than any riches. It's better than anything that hell has to offer us. I'm telling you, God is a good God. She heard. She heard. She heard about this king. She heard that there was something different about him than all the other kings. Oh, my God. Jesus is not like all other gods. Jesus is not like Buddha. He's not like Muhammad. He's not like all these other gods. He alone, God said, I I searched to try to find to see if there was any other God. And I found no other God beside me. There's no other God that can compare with him. And the Bible says that when she heard of it, she decided she was going to go seek it out. She came to him with her hard questions. She came to him with her disappointments, with the things maybe that she thought was going to bring hope and satisfaction in her life. Only to find out that none of that had uh, uh, came with what she thought it was going to come with. And the Bible says that he answered every single one of her questions. See, there's a lot of folks living life and they're going through life with all kinds of questions and, 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 and things in their life they can't figure out for themselves. But when you come to the king, honey, you don't need to call the psychic hotline. You don't, you don't need to go and get on, you know, on, online and, and try to figure out, you know what you need to do? You need to get along with the king for just a little while. And you need to start asking him and say, hey king, I've got some questions. I really don't understand. Why did this happen in my life? And why did that happen in my life? And I don't understand. Can I tell you? You know what you'll find out is the king has all the answers. I may not have all the answers. Bishop might not have all the answers. Pastor T knows a lot of stuff, but he doesn't have all the answers. Uh, But when you come in contact with the king and you start asking him the hard questions of life, all of a sudden you start figuring this stuff out. Come on, somebody. I don't know what you're struggling with today. Maybe you've got some disappointments and some bitterness in your life. Uh, You know what you need to do? Come to the king and ask your hard questions this morning and let God answer them. God is not intimidated by your hard questions. He's not intimidated by your hard questions. And the Bible says at the end of her encounter, she had no spirit left within her. There was no fight left within her. She couldn't resist it. And ultimately, she was convinced for herself. She was convinced for herself that there was nobody like the king. And she began to give the testimony. Now, that was just my introduction. Can I get to my message? Can I preach a little while? Is that okay? There's probably not a more popular subject talked about in our world today. It seems like everybody in our world is on the search. They're desperately seeking some place of happiness. Everybody's looking in different places, trying different things. They think that maybe perhaps it's in relationships that that's where they're going to find true happiness. Maybe it's in careers. And so they give themselves to, 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 uh, uh, you know, uh, fulfilling their desire in careers. And, And maybe they think, well, maybe it's in the pleasures of this world. And so they give themselves to the search for happiness. But the reality is this. At the end of the day, they find out that all of those things, like the wise man said, like the man of God that we're reading about here today, Solomon said, at the end of the day, what I found out is all of those things, the riches and the wealth and the pleasures of this world and all of those relationships, at the end of the day, you know what you find out? All of that stuff is vanity and it's vexation of spirit. There is no, there is no fulfillment. There is no happiness. There is no hope in any of those things. She was desperately looking for some happiness in her life. And we know those things of this world don't bring happiness in this story. It wasn't the splendor of the palace. It wasn't the extravagance of the surroundings. It wasn't all of the great things that she recognized or noticed in the king's kingdom that brought her to the awareness that he was the king above all the kings of that earth. 
It was, her, it was a keen observation made by the queen that ultimately captured her attention when she said this, Happy are thy servants, and happy are these thy men who stand continually before thee and, in, and, and, and glean your wisdom. Can I just tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if there ought to be a group of people on planet earth that ought to be a happy people, It ought to be those of us. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel like preaching this morning, Bishop. I'm just going to tell you. If there ought to be a people on the planet earth that ought to be filled with joy and satisfaction and happiness, it ought to be those of us that have been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because guess what? I don't have to just come to church and feel the goosebumps on Sunday morning and Sunday night. I get to take King Jesus everywhere I go, every day of my life, through every valley, through every mountaintop experience. I've got Jesus with me every single day. Come on, church. We ought to be a happy people. Some of y'all need to smile this morning. It's okay. You can smile. You know, somebody said, how do you, how do you know the Christians at Walmart? They're the ones not smiling. That's not the will of God. Right? That's not the will of God. We ought to walk in everywhere we go with a smile on our face and a spring in our step. That doesn't mean that everything in our world is going Right? Roger Ellie told me today on the way to church, driving, driving down the road, and, and uh, as they're driving down the road, guys, we eating on the side of the road, and hit a rock, and just as they're passing by, that rock went right through the windshield. On the way to church, can you believe that stinking devil? See, that's why you don't need to do yard work. That's why I'm against weed eating. You know, it'd be very easy. He said, man, you know, I pulled over, I was ready to <laughs> have a few words with that boy, and then I thought, wait a minute, I'm on my way to church. Listen, that doesn't mean that everything in your life is going right and everything's perfect and man, I've got, no, I've got no problems and I've got no troubles. But you know what? When you have an understanding that you're in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you can get a bad doctor's report and still come in with a smile on your face and with your hands lifted up. You can come in. Have no money in the bank account. And you can still lift up hands and worship Him. You want to know why? Because we serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I don't worship based on my circumstance. I don't worship based on everything going right. I worship. I praise Him. I'm happy. I've got a joy in my life. Because I get to be in the presence of the King of kings and Lord of lords. I wonder if there are any happy servants in this house today. I wonder if there's anybody that you're glad to be blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled, child of the King. We need to testify about it. We need to talk about it. We need to let the world know there's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Him. And there's no life uh, like living in the King's house. going to tell you flat out, I, I, I made up in my mind, I will not calm down. You want to know why? I don't belong here. I don't belong in the king's palace. I never should have been here. I should have been on the outside looking into the blessings and the goodness of God. But I'm so glad that he loved a sinner like me. I'm so glad that while I was in my sins and trespasses, uh, He died for me. He loved me. Come on, somebody. I don't worship because the songs please me every time. I don't worship because the beat is just right every time. I worship uh, because I'm just glad to be in the King's Palace. I'm just glad. I'm just glad. To be a child of the king. Come on somebody. 
We need to crank up the worship. We need to crank up our praise. We need to testify because this is the best life. And this world needs to see that we're a happy people. Yes, we are. Somebody ought to clap your hands. Thank the Lord right now. people when they walk through those doors when I go to my job when I'm out in the world I want to smile on my face uh, so they'll recognize uh, I'm not a down in the mouth servant uh, I'm not an unhappy servant uh, I'm not a disgruntled servant uh, I'm not a bitter servant I'm a happy servant of the king Praise God. Listen, we got some reasons to be happy, y'all. We got some reasons to be happy. These servants, they had access to the power of the king. Hello? Whatever the king said, the Bible says where the word of the king is, there is power. Whatever they had need of in their life, they had access to the wealth and to the power of the king. If they had a dilemma, a problem going on in their world, all they had to do was go to the king and say, hey, king, I got a little situation going on in my life. I'm not able to pay my bills or I'm not able to do that. And so they were able to go to the king because he had wealth and because he had power. Are you making the connection? <laughs> I, one of the reasons that I'm happy is because no matter what I'm going through in this life, no matter what the situation is, I have access to the wealth and to the power of the king. I have access to the wealth and to the power of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So that doesn't mean how it can get as bad as it can possibly get. The report can get as bad as it can possibly get. But I've got access to the King that created this world. And so I may be sick in my body, but I serve a healer. I may be in a bad relationship, but I've got a wonderful counselor. Come on, somebody. You want to know why you can be happy living for Jesus? It's because you cannot be defeated. You absolutely cannot be defeated by the enemy. Because he said, all power, all power, all power in heaven and earth belongs to me. We've got access to the power of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords today. Somebody needs to get in the presence of the King right now. And say, God, I don't have the answers. Uh, I need your help today. God has the power for what you need in your life. I wonder if there's anybody just got a testimony. that You can testify. If it hadn't been for the power of the king. Well, what you frowning about then? Huh? I got a testimony. Got a testimony. I love talking to Brother Conan because just when I think I've heard all of his stories, he's got about another 12 stories. Right? Another 12 stories of miracles and healings and deliverance and salvation and power and anointing. And you know what I say? I say, God, if you did it for him, you can do it for us. Don't ever let us forget. Don't ever let us forget. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, somebody. It's time to start believing God for the impossible. It's time to start believing God. What you think God can't do, it's time to start believing Him for that. It's time to start believing God for blind eyes, opening deaf ears, being unstopped. We have access to the power of the king. You want to know why I'm happy? Because I got access to the power of the king. So when I'm poor as Job's turkey, 
That's Southern Illinois. We'll explain it to y'all later. I can, I can testify like David. I once was young, and now I'm not so young. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen his seed begging bread. So guess what? I don't need money to be happy. I just felt, I just felt a little. Some of you are like, yeah, but it sure helps. <laughs> it does. <laughs> the Bible says money answers all things. So money, but can I tell you? What's, what's happened for a lot of us is that love of money has consumed us so much that we pursue it, we pursue it, we pursue it. And we think it's going to get us all this happiness and all this happiness. And you know what you find out? It, it's never enough. I learned an important lesson. This is for all you young people. I learned an important lesson a long time ago. Somebody told me, whatever you make, that's what you spend. So you can, you can be making a lot more money than you used to make and live the same way because what you make is what you spend. And so money, finances, none of that stuff ever brings real happiness. You know what does bring real happiness? Is when you know, I'm going to give to the kingdom of God. I'm going to bless the kingdom of God. It's not mine anyway. I give it back. And knowing that you can walk into the throne of grace. And say, God, I need your help. I need you to supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. And can I tell you, we serve a gracious, giving, loving, caring God. That's where real happiness is. It's not in the George Washington or the Ben Franklin. See, I don't even know any bigger dollars than that. But I have access to the wealth and power of the king. You ever known somebody, you just can't, you just can't beat them? There's a guy, there's a guy that I, I grew up with, and, and you know, we, we'd wrestle and fight, whatever. And he's the kind of guy, you'd hit him, and he'd just look at you and laugh and smile. That's the guy you got to be scared of. And you know what? Can I tell you the person that hell is scared of? Is that person that he beats you with everything that he's got. He comes at you with all kinds of trials and tribulations and issues and problems, and you still come into the house of God. <laughs> Lifting up holy hands. He doesn't know what to do with happy servants. He doesn't know what to do with somebody that says it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens to me in this life. God's still a good God. He's still worthy of my praise. And one way or the other, like the three Hebrew boys, one way or the other, I'm coming through this. I'm coming out of my trial. Hell does not know what to do with that kind of child of God. Put a smile on your face. Punch your neighbor in the arm real hard. Tell him I'm a happy sermon. Punch your other neighbor and say, would you smile today? The other reason, one of the other reasons that they were happy because they had access to the wisdom of the king. Can I just tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in very complex times. We're living in difficult hours. I mean, there are so many things that are coming at us that we never dreamed that we were going to have to address situations going on in our world that just... I mean, it's just coming at you left and right, left and right. All of these things coming at us. But you know what? When I don't know the direction, when I don't know the way, I've got access to the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the ending. And I have access to the wisdom of the king. One of my favorite verses has become James 1 and 5. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives liberally to all men. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? You don't have to chew your fingernails off. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to go to bed worrying about how everything's going to work out, how it's all going to happen. What you, you know what you need to do is you need to get along with the king and tell the king, Lord, I need some of your wisdom. 
Because, see, I can only see the present. I can only see what's going on right now. And I can only see what has been. But, God, you see what has been. You see the things from yesterday that I did not see. You see my right now. But you also see my tomorrow. And that's why I put my life in your hands. Because you're going to navigate my life. You're going to guide me and direct me and uh, order my steps. Come on, somebody. We've got reason to have peace. You hear me? We've got a reason to have peace and to be happy because we've got access to the wisdom of the king. When you don't know which way to go, you don't know the direction for your life. You have a king who sees all. and He knows everything. And the last thing, the last reason they were happy. You want to know why they were happy? She said, because your servants stand continually. In your presence. I'm thankful for the power. I'm thankful for his wealth. I'm thankful for his wisdom. But you know what I love above all else? Is I love being in his presence. I love to be lost in his presence. You know, you want to know why a lot of folks don't understand uh, uh, about all the, the Bible says. That, that in His presence, there's what? Fullness of joy. So that leads me to believe there are some other things that lead to partial joy. There are some other areas of life that it might, it might give you a... The Bible says that the pleasures of sin last for a season. But somewhere along the line, you're going to have to pay the piper. Right? Justin, we talk about that, right? Somewhere along the line, you can, and it's going to be fun for a little bit, and, and, and you may have some semblance of joy for a little while, but somewhere along the line, you're going to have to pay the price for all of that kind of stuff. And so there's a partial joy with that, but in His presence, there is fullness of joy. Oh, I feel like preaching just a little while. Child of God, it's not the will of God for you to live depressed. It's not the will of God for saints of God, for children of God to be depressed, to battle depression. It's the will of God for you to have the joy of the Lord in your life. I'm going to tell you why it's important. In His presence is fullness of joy. And then the psalmist said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. If you're not in His presence, you're not getting joy. And if you don't have joy, it's, you're not going to have strength in your life. It's not an option to be a child of God and whether or not you're going to get in the presence of God. If you don't get in His presence continually, daily, every day, get lost in His presence. You're going to be weak. You're going to be challenged by the enemy. Oh, but if you get lost in His presence, you'll have the strength of the Lord. And you'll be able to overcome any enemy, any adversary, any trouble. You want to know why I'm a crazy maniac? And I am. What was that? Happy servant, sis. I'm a happy servant. I am. Listen, living for God is not a drudgery. My God, we got to turn this thing around. Living for God is not a drudgery. It's not a task. It's not just a duty and a responsibility. Can I tell you, this is the best life. There is no life like living for Jesus. I wouldn't trade this. I said I wouldn't trade this for all the riches in this world. This is the life. This is the best life. Because I'm in the presence. I'm in the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Stand, please. Somebody give the Lord some praise right now. See, some folks say, some folks say, well, I don't know about that church stuff, you know. I mean, if I, you know, if I go to church, then, man, I can't do this, and I can't do that, and I can't do this, and I can't do that. Oh, man, woe is me. Yeah, you can't have sexually transmitted diseases, and... Hello? You can't spend the night 
around the porcelain throne throwing up what you ingested the night before. And you can't get hooked and addicted to drugs. And you can't have broken marriages and broken homes because you're out catting around. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You've got to sacrifice some stuff. You've got you to sacrifice some stuff to come into a place where you can have joy and love and peace and hope and strength. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'll trade that garbage. I'll trade that junk. I'll trade the filth of the world for this stuff any day of the week. For the blessings of God. The favor of God. Are you kidding me? This is the life. This is the best life. See that little deal up there? That's me. In a world full of people, you hear me now, there is a major epidemic in our world. Antidepressants are being prescribed at an unprecedented measure in a world where we are as wealthy as we have ever been in our life we are more educated than we have ever been in our life there are more opportunities for pleasure and travel and all that kind of stuff than there's ever been in the history of the world and people are more depressed than they've ever been but in a world where there is no happiness you don't have to be the blue guy anymore some of you can identify with the blue guys you don't have to be the blue guys anymore you know what you know what you need today do what you need to do today is you need to be like the queen of sheep I've heard them crazy Pentecostal folks talking about this Holy Ghost deal. Don't you love Pentecostal folks? They always talk about the Holy Ghost. You want to know why? Because everybody turn around, look around, look around for just a minute. Look around, look around. Go ahead, turn around. That's a good looking group of people, isn't it? at least some of you anyway (laughs) you want to know you want to know the deal here's the deal you look around up in the balcony and you look at all these folks here today you look at all these folks here today don't they look good I mean just all cleaned up but you know the reality of it today you look around you see all these folks a bunch of yellow people in the house but can I tell you there is there is a large group of folks in this room right now that we used to be the blue guys we used to be the ones running to the parties thinking okay this is going to give me the joy find out it ain't there running to drugs and alcohol it ain't there running to pleasures and careers and all that, and find out it ain't there until somebody said listen you ain't never experienced nothing in this world until you've come in contact with the real thing with the king of kings and the lord of lords Here's what I want to do today. I want to give every single person in this room an invitation to be like the Queen of Sheba. The Bible says she packed up all of her stuff. You know what I love about it? The Bible says she took all of her camels and all of her stuff. You know what she thought she was going to do? She thought she was going to go in and impress the richest man in the world with her little stuff. And you know what we do? 
we come to God and we think we're going to impress Him with all of our little stuff, our talents and our abilities. And we get in His presence and we realize, oh my goodness. There is no end to His kingdom. Heaven is His throne and earth is His footstool. What are you going to give a God that owns the cattle on a thousand hills? There, there is nobody like Jesus. So you know what you need to do today? You need to pack up all of your stuff. You need to pack up all of your guilt and all of your shame and all the stuff from your yesterday, all of your past. Pack it all up. And say, I'm going to go see and find out if what these folks are saying about this king is true and about if it's real. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you come in contact with the king, somebody's going to leave this place and they're going to be like the queen of Sheba when she said, oh, the half has never been told about the glory of this king. You know what I honestly believe? I honestly believe the queen of Sheba. Now, there's a lot of question about what happened to the queen of Sheba. I honestly believe that the queen of Sheba would have traded everything that she had to just be a servant in the king's house. And there are some theologians that believe that that might have happened, that she might have connected herself with Solomon in one of the marriages just to be in the presence of the king. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, once you get in his presence, once you experience the grace and the love and the mercy and the power of the king, you know what you say? I don't want to ever leave this place. I don't want to ever get out of his presence. I don't want to ever leave being in the king's house. So this morning, I know the hour's late, but I want to, I want to issue an invitation this morning to somebody. Actually, I want to issue an invitation to everybody in this room right now. I want you to come and see about this king. Some of you have some hard questions. Some of you children of God, you've got some tough things going on in your life. You know what I want you to do? I want you to come and get lost in the presence of the king and see if God can't give you answers for the dilemmas and direction of your life. Would you do me a favor? Reach over, grab somebody by the hand right now. And I'm going to ask for everybody in this room, balcony, everywhere. I want you to come. And when you come, I want you to come together. And I want you to lift up your hands and just begin to call upon the name of the Lord and just get lost in His presence. Come on, would you come? Would you come?